So what do y'all do uh, in the dark? How'd you spend your time? Outside. You spend it outside. Well, welcome back. Um, thank you, Mike, for having me back. I, um, I feel like I'm, I'm just coming off a moon trip, right? I, I sat here in the dark thinking, this is historic. The CES, electronics, and we don't have power. That's amazing. Well, as Mike said, I'm Stacy Pearsall, founder of the Veterans Portrait Project, and this is my sidekick, Charlie. Hi, bud. He's drooling because he sees the treat in my hand. Charlie is my uh, seizure and mobility support dog, and he's going to be hanging out on stage with me. Charlie, sit down. Oh, good boy, stay. Right, so let's get back on track and talk a little bit about personal projects. Yesterday I talked to you about <laughs> I talked to you about the Veterans Portrait Project and how it came to be, but if you weren't here and you weren't in the crowd or you weren't uh, tuning in on the streamer, let me get a refresher for you. First of all, I want you to know how important personal projects can, can impact your professional life. One definitely will carry the other forward and vice versa. But before I get to that, let me just tell you a little bit about how I came to do the Veterans Portrait Project. I, I see an Air Force gentleman coming in right now. Hey there. I joined the Air Force when I was 17, and I became a photographer. During that time, I joined the Elite Combat Camera Unit in Charleston, South Carolina, where I traveled the globe documenting the military story as a military photojournalist. I traveled to over 41 countries and spent 280 days a year on the road. I did that for six years. Ultimately, I had been hit by an improvised explosive device in 2003 and again in 2007, getting banged up enough to kind of end my career, unfortunately. And for 18 months I spent in, in physical rehabilitation, I found myself without an identity. For so long, I considered myself a military photographer, and I was going to be that for 20 odd years. Unfortunately, life tends to throw you a curveball every once in a while. And then I found myself out of a job, not doing photography, feeling really low, and not knowing what my, my next step was to be. One day when I was sitting in the VA hospital, an, el an elderly gentleman came and sat next to me. I saw him staring at my periphery, much like many people do, because I am not your typical face of the veteran. And I thought that he was staring at me because I was an anomaly, like everybody else did. But really, he was just wanting to start a conversation. So I turned to him and I asked him if there was something I could help him with. That was just the window of opportunity he was looking for to really tell me about himself, too. What I found out was that his name was Mickey Dorsey, World War II veteran. He was in Patton's army and liberated a concentration camp, an American hero. I looked around the hospital and I saw all the other faces of veterans sitting amongst me and thought, each and every one of them has an extraordinary story to tell. I should take their pictures and mark their stories. So with that said, every project has a beginning. For me, it started right there with Mickey Dorsey. I had a camera that I had acquired when I left the Air Force and a couple of strobes, Nikon of course. And I decided that I was going to bring this simple kid to the VA hospital, and when I was waiting for my appointments, I would take portraits to kill time. It was kind of a way to take these portraits and give back to my community. So what, what I want you to do is think about what you're interested in. For me, I was interested in saying thank you to the community that I love so much, the veteran community. But each and every one of you offers some kind of interest in your life. Perhaps you are interested in volunteering at your Humane Society. Maybe they need a photographer to help make beautiful portraits to help get these animals adopted. Just a thought. The other thing is, what is your motivation? For me, my motivation was to get the camera back in my hands, to create beautiful art with the photography. Because at that moment, I had lived my life in service. I was a combat photographer. That's how I identified. So my motivation was to get outside of my own head, find new direction, and give back in the process. But we'll get back to that. 
The other part is incentive. For some reason, must be the power gods. The clicker's not working. Anyway, incentive. And now it's working. Deet, deet, deet. OK, back and on up. Bear with me, y'all. The gremlins are out for us today. OK, so incentive. The incentive for me was to see the faces and the smiles when I provided a wonderful portrait for the veterans, something that their families could hold on to, to put on the wall. Not only that, but to archive the stories of America's men and fighting men and women, to make sure that these stories are archived for, for all time. Now that said, incentive comes in many, in, from many directions, and I'm going to go a little deeper in that. Because for each and every one of you who are thinking about starting a personal project, incentive may vary for you too. Now, wait, oh, <laughs> hello. She's got an important announcement, I'm sure. In case you weren't aware, the power has been restored in the facility. Yay! Now, before you go out and you start a personal project, it's important to assess where you are in your life. For me, I didn't have a whole lot going on. Oh, she's going to say it one more time. The power is restored. Let's hear it from her own lips. OK, now that we know that for sure, what I want you to do is think about uh, where you're at in your life. For me, as I said, I didn't have a whole lot going on. I was really wrapped up in my own mind. I was in 18 months of recovery from my physical injuries that I'd sustained while covering the war in Iraq. But for each and every one of you, you may be at a point in your life where you're ready to get back, or you have the time, or you have the means. Maybe you're so darn busy that you say, there is no possible way I could fit any more into this schedule I've got. But believe you me, there's time if you're really passionate about it. So let's talk about that. Wait for it. Ah, uh, OK. So for me, my incentive was giving back. I wanted to say thank you to the veterans. I wanted to archive their stories. I wanted to give them something to take home. I didn't have a whole lot to give. I didn't have money. But I did have a camera and some creativity. So that's what I, that's what I clung on to. There are other organizations that I like to get involved with, particularly military and veteran organizations, because that is sort of my passion, finding what motivates you. But perhaps you have some special, unique skills. For me, I speak the military language. I know what an MRE is or a, an FNG. We won't get into that. Or a BCG. You can Google that. It's literally got its own definition. But perhaps you come from a tech background or you, you're an archer, or you're an equestrian, or perhaps you're a cobbler, a shoemaker. Each and every one of these skills is unique to you. You as an individual have this artistry that you can bring. And that is what separates you when beginning a personal project. For me, I also like to look and encourage people to think within themselves. What is it about life that strikes you, that gains your attention? For me, I had this pet peeve. I'm going back before I met Mickey in that hospital that day. When I left the service, I went into the VA hospital. And as I said, I'm not the typical face of a veteran. So when I sat in that hospital, most of the people working there thought that I was bringing my grandfather to his doctor's appointment, or that I was bringing my husband to his appointment. And it really irked me that I got passed over time and again that I was overlooked. I felt marginalized. I wanted to do something about it. So the project was a way to answer that, a way to circumvent that. If I could capture portraits of veterans, I could show just how diverse a community it is. And if I could share that with my community and share that with the public, maybe in turn, I would begin to redefine the face of veteran communities. 
And therefore, having a social change is an important factor of personal projects. Just as Amy Vitale likes to photograph animals, for instance, the elephants and the pandas, I like to photograph veterans. I want to bring about social change, changing the identity of how we, how we look at veterans, but also identifying how we can help. You're probably thinking, well, these stories have been done before, these projects have been done before, there is a plethora of different photography uh, nonprofits out there. That's true. But nobody has a monopoly on a photography topic. The difference is we bring our personal histories, our unique talents and skills, and we look at the world differently because we all grew up with our own life's experiences. And therefore, no one person will ever document the subject the same way. Your point of view is important. What you want to see change in our life and our social change is important. So make sure that your voice is heard. When you're sitting down and you're thinking, I want to do this project, it's important to be very clear to yourself what your, objection, what your objectives are. Initially, I sat down and I put pen to paper. I want to say thanks to veterans, so I'll do portraits. It began to evolve as my project evolved, and that's OK, and the definition evolved. And you may find that that's what's going to happen for you, too. But just, just from the very beginning, from the very start, start very simple, one sentence. What is your goal? And define that for yourself. Once you say, OK, I want to photograph puppies at the Humane Society so that I can get them adopted, pretty simple. One line, one line sentence, and perhaps it'll evolve from there. Maybe you want to do something a little bit more complex than that. So let's talk about setting reasonable goals, achievable goals. Every project needs one. <laughs> this is hilarious. OK. What's great about personal projects, and when I, when I talked about incentives, this is where this comes in. We can learn new skills. When I began the project, as I said, I only had a few SB strobes. I had taken a Joe McNally class. And as a photojournalist, I loved the class. I learned so much. But because I was a photojournalist, I did not retain it. So I was basically starting from square one. I had to learn all over again. And boy, was that beautiful. Because there's nothing more wonderful than evolving photographically. So by doing a personal project, you can evolve your skills. But you can also create a niche portfolio in the process. I have 6,500 veterans' portraits in my archive now. I am now defined as the veterans' portrait <laughs> photographer. And that's OK. I love this genre, and I love what I do. But I've created this beautiful niche portfolio. I've also established networks in the process. What's great is that if you go out and you give of yourself your talents, because each and every one of you have a unique skill and a unique talent, people love that. And in that process, you're going to be meeting people, wonderful people, not only the people you're photographing, but those who are related to them. They're like, dang, that was an awesome picture. Who took that? Oh, that was Stacy. Cool, I want to see if she'll do this commercial assignment for me, which leads me into the next one, getting your work seen. Not only is it good to get your work out there and to create networks, but your work is being seen. And with the Veterans Portrait Project, we've been published all over the place thanks to the wonderful um, news agencies who believe in the project. And again, if I was out there trying to make money off of this program, it wouldn't have the heart that it does. And it wouldn't definitely not get the leverage it does. I wouldn't be on this stage talking to you about the project if it didn't. And lastly, and probably the most important aspect of this, is to be inspired. Each and every day that I get up and I go to do the project, I am so motivated. Because I'm going to meet somebody new. I'm going to hear an extraordinary story. I am going to create art. And I'm going to make somebody smile. For you, a personal project should be the very same way, to make connections to breach that part of your motivation into your professional life.
these two should feed each other. Now you're like, all right, so I know what I want to do. I have an idea, but I'm not really sure where to start. How do I find subjects? Well, first of all, you start right in your own backyard. There are several interest groups for me. I've got the VFW and the American Legion. But perhaps, and again, I go back to my example of wanting to help your local humane society. It's right around the corner from you, I imagine. And they're always looking for volunteers. The other is organizations. So I have the fortune, <laughs> I have the fortunate uh, to have had relationships with a number of veterans over the course, and they know people and they know organizations, and therefore the word gets out. Now it's wonderful because the word is spread so much that instead of my reaching out to them, they're reaching out to me, and that's how these things work. Now that gal right in the middle is my sister. She is the first, A10, first female A-10 crew chief in United States history. So sometimes all you gotta look is to your left or right to find your subjects. Social media is huge, big, because do you have a veteran you know, or a veteran in your family sitting right next to you? See how easy that was? Hey, let's get your picture made, whoop. But a personal project could be just that simple. We tend to overcomplicate things, don't we? We talk ourselves out of things all the time. Well, you know, I got this project at work coming up and it's really gonna be the, the time suck. So we come up with all these excuses as to why we can't. Stop making excuses and just put the camera to your face, people. It's really that easy. Because in the end, it's just as simple as maybe going out, getting your camera, and just taking pictures. For me, social events are huge. I go to the Big E Fair where they celebrate Veterans Day. I've been to Water Fire uh, where there, it's another Veterans Day celebration. There is always something for me to go to. Listen, I went to Laconia Bike Week and set up my studio and had veterans with their motorcycles drive in. It was awesome. Every project needs parameters though. As I said, you have to find a happy balance between the work that's getting you paid and the work that's paying your heart. And for me, it's going to be an investment of time. You may have to get up, give up that day watching the Super Bowl with your friends. But if you're doing a project that you're passionate about, you shouldn't really care. There should be no question, I want to go do this. The other one is pro gear upgrades. When I left the military, I had two cameras. Both of them were kind of dated. The military, they issued me my kits. But now I had to just, like start from scratch. Most of you, I would hope, have a camera at home. But you may be like, oh, it's, it's nothing good to take portraits. Just start. That's where you start. Then, as you build relationships and connections, they will lead to paid assignments. Those paid assignments, you'll squirrel away a portion of those funds and upgrade your gear. Over the last 10 years, I have continued to upgrade my equipment, and I'm just about happy. There are a few lenses in that, in that case right over there that I'd like to bust into, but another couple of years, and I will make that happen. Now, there is going pro versus going pro bono. I am a bleeding heart, and my husband is like, Stacy, you got to put the kibosh on that. You can't pay your bills with a thank you. I get it. The project I don't charge money for. It's absolutely free for veterans. I knew that from the start. And that may be your mantra too. But I encourage you to at the start of the year say I am going to do X number of events pro bono. When I hit that cap I will be able to tell the other requesters that I can't. But if you want to try, if you want to sponsor an event, that would be wonderful. So for me, when I first started that first year, I did the Veterans Portrait Project. Everything came out of my pocket. You can only do that for so long before you drain yourself dry. But what's great, and again, when you do things that celebrate others, wanting nothing or asking nothing in return, people want to invest in that. And I have been fortunate enough to have the support of folks like USAA, Nikon the VA, 
the list goes on. Create a sustainable project. And by sustainable, I don't mean just financial. I mean emotional. As you can imagine, doing the Veterans Portrait Project, I hear some extraordinary stories. And they can really take a toll on me, given my background. I'm invested in them. I open up emotionally, and that takes a toll. But the payback from what I get energy-wise is so fulfilling in return. Not only that, but you have to think about, how many days am I going to be away from my wonderful husband? Finding that balance. But again, if you're passionate about what you're doing, it's going to be worth that investment. And listen, you can't, again, pay your bills with good karma. So let's talk a little bit about that. You can invest in yourself. Taking those paid assignments that you do and squirreling away a portion of, of that money to put forward to that next shoot that you want to do. Then you can do crowdfunding. I've got a crowdfunding site going on right now because I need to get the Veterans Portrait Project to Alaska. Alaska, that's going to cost some change. <laughs> Corporate sponsorship. As I said, when the project became successful and it became well known, many people stepped up and said, hey, we want to help. How can we help? And I'm like, well, going to Alaska is probably going to cost me $8,000. Can you get me there? Quick story. I wasn't asking for help at all at the beginning. And I was at an exhibition in Montclair, New Jersey, where I ran into a financier. And I showed him a portrait that I had taken. He's like, wow, this is great. What is it? I was like, it's the Veterans Portrait Project. I want to photograph veterans in every state and province. He's like, wow, that's cool. I gave him my card. He gave me his. Never thought anything would come of it. Probably about six or eight months later, a gentleman from USAA called me. He's like, hey, so a friend of mine saw your exhibition in New York, or in New Jersey. I want you to come down to Florida and tell me more about it. And I was like, OK. Next thing I know, USAA said they wanted to support me at 13 cities that first year. So they really came through. Applying for grants. There are a number of people out there who are very generous and have money set aside for different topics. Perhaps what you want to pursue is within that vein, and they can fund you with grants. The other one is going to be to sell and license imagery. Now, I don't do this a lot. And for the Veterans Portrait Project, it's not about commercialism. It's about getting the pictures and the stories of the veterans out there. But if you're doing something that's in the same vein, for instance, USAA wanted to feature a number of portraits, Perhaps you could sell or license that. But that's just an example. And then creating merchandise. Boy, do I have some merch. T-shirts. Now, that's part of the crowdfunding aspect. So I have Veterans Portrait Project uh, branded T-shirts and sweatshirts and, and hats. And people will buy these, uh, these merchandise and then add an additional donation. So that's part of that crowdfunding. Remember, personal projects should be personal. If you don't feel personally impacted by the, the subject matter, then perhaps you need to readdress what, your, what the topic is. In the end, you should wake up and think, yes, I get to go do this. If you're thinking, oh, man, why did I get myself into this? Stop what you're doing and start over again. For me, the Veterans Portrait Project is, is food for my soul. It started out as just a way to give back, but has become so much more than that. It has divined who I am. With that, I want to ask anybody who's a veteran in the crowd to stand or raise your hand, please. Thank you so much for your service. I hope to get your portraits and your stories one day. And to my favorite veteran, Andy Dunaway is an icon rep out there. He's way in the back. You can go harass him later. I love you. I want to ask you all to think about how you could impact your communities through the art of photography. And again, it's just an investment of your time. If you have any questions, I'll be here. I'm happy to answer them. And with that, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Stacey Pearsall.
All right, we're going to make a quick transition to get back on track with Dixie Dixon. So if you have any questions for Stacy, please, um, she'll field them off on the side here. If you have any questions for Charlie, the same thing. But um, we're going to make a fast transition to get back on track. Thank you, Stacy, so much. Anybody want a better quarter project pin? Anybody want a pin? We will uh, bring the pins around. Ladies and gentlemen, in and around the booth, come up and grab a seat. We're going to get the next program started with Dixie Dixon in just a minute or two.